Good morning, my outstanding friends. I am going to present today my dipole electron flood theory in some detail. Not a whole lot, just enough to cover so it should be well understood. And the reason I am doing this is to associate this to my paper about dipole electron flood theory because I've been offered a full waiver to submit my work. Well, here's what it says from academia. Academia Quantum is led by Editor-in-Chief Professor Steve Lamoureux, Yale University. We are pleased to offer you a full waiver. That's big to me. To submit your work, published articles will be disseminated to academia use 260 million users. Now, a full waiver means that they don't have to peer review and say, oh, I don't agree with that, I don't, and, and it goes on forever. And then they usually don't, most of the time they don't even look at it, first of all. Second, when they do look at it, 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 it turns into a free-for-all circular type of thing. So a full waiver means that they should just go ahead and publish it. That's what I'm hoping for. Now, let me show you what my dipole electron flood theory is. And, it, and it, it, as far as I'm concerned, and I will discuss this with anyone. I feel it overturns the, the standard model, first of all, and a lot of effect by that. Um, and I think I can show proof of it in our experiments. So let's, let me just show you what dipole electron flood theory is in my paper, which I am going to submit, and then we'll see what happens, how people respond. All right, but I'm just basically going to read through it, and then I am going to explain it a little later. The anatomy of a proton. All right, dipole electron flood theory is a new atomic model changes the nucleus from a completely positive into a dipole made of tiny dipoles. Dipoles just means positive and a negative. They're called Dirac neutrinos. Instead of a large positive only core and a bunch of little electrons. Protons and neutrons are made of dipoles just as everything is. In certain stable quantities we now call atoms in various sizes. These are the atoms. Now, and they can become stable at certain sizes, but one, a hydrogen proton is 1823 particles. It's stable at that point, but you get smaller than that and they just fall apart. And then you get bigger, and in only certain areas, like b between here at, at 1825 or so, by the time you only get to helium, which is the next stable one, you're up to like 7,000 and something of these little particles. So it it's, gets big quick, and it allows for biological activity and all that stuff. But the anatomy of proton is not one big positive that they can smash into quarks and all these little things. No. It's all dipoles in a ball. All right, so when they smash them, they get a whole batch of stuff, but it's just all debris. Whoops, there goes the dark matter. Dark matter sits in the center of everything. <laughs> That's the dark matter right there. Now, particles are all, all, everything there is made is made of the white particle and the black particle attached together. As these, every, every ball of these is these two together. It's a magnet. It's a bar magnet, but it's in a ball shape. And they pop together. And then you get, they all add together until you get to 1823. And that is a proton. A neutron is 1824. It has a neutral number. So you got muons and you got electron neutrinos. And um, the difference between the standard model and this model is that the nucleus is made up of all of these, but there's 1,823 of them. It's not made up of a bunch of little particles that are just all kinds of different things. It's made up of all of these in different states. When they smash them, they get... Sometimes they get pieces this big, sometimes they get pieces that big, sometimes they get pieces that big, sometimes they're in a circle. They, they, they're all kinds of crazy things that they see. And they say, oh, it's a particle zoo. No, it isn't just pieces formed in different ways. All right, now, here's, what, here's what's going to change. These are changes in science as a totality. 
Dipole to dipole electron flow theory, what changes in science? With the mounting evidence leading to the realization that the universe and everything in it is made up of these dipole particles, the changes will need to take place in academic textbooks of all different sciences. You can't start with the, a wrong model and everything grows from it is right. No. You have to start from the right model and then everything grow from it. So what about chemistry? Periodic change table has to change. That's not a one. That's a 1825 or something. And they're all, it's all going to be totally different. But it, it will account for everything. As we can see, the growing number of electrons, you know, electron neutrinos, surrounding that dark core, it'll start to make sense on how molecules and isotopes particularly work in half-lives. Because a half-life just means you've got a, an atom that doesn't have quite enough of the right particles. So some of these are missing. All right, and it'll only stay stable like that for so long until it attracts enough, until they fill in all the missing spots. And then it becomes stable. Same thing if it has too many of these particles. It has to kick them out. That's what isotopes are. So we got chemistry problems we got to work on. Space and uh, that's not space is totally wrong as they have it now. Everything in space has fields and there's particles and there's so light coming through it is going to slow down absolutely no question. So the redshift totally wrong. We have literally no idea how far away things are from us because everything is based on the speed of light never changing. I show that's just not true. Speed of light is very variable. And the more fields and debris you have in, in front of it, the slower it's going to come. It's going to just keep on boom, 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 boom. It's just going to slow down. All right? We put it through a Venturi to speed it up. So we know we can speed it up. And that Einstein says, no, it's impossible. We know we can slow it down. Everybody knows you can slow light down. So Einstein was just wrong, and they, nobody can speak against it. That's why having an unrestricted ability to post something like this is just, that's unheard of. I'm hoping that's the case. You know, I just want you to know, this is a really a let, red letter day here for me. Because I got very, honestly, I got jaded. Because every time I would submit anything, it would just be rejected instantaneously. I would just waste all my time. So I just went to YouTube and just kept posting and posting and posting. And to be offered a full waiver to submit my work, that's just, that's seventh heaven for me. So let's see if that actually happens and what, what is the result. There's 260 million people are supposed to be able to see this. We'll see. Okay, this little video just is in support of showing you the, uh, the um, dipole electron flood theory. Now, again, this is my model of the proton. All the dark part goes to the center, and it's made out of all dipoles. When you get down into the subatomic range, you can separate the positive from the negative. You cannot do that in atoms. You pull them apart, bar magnets, you just end up with two bar magnets. You break those, you got four, you got eight, you got 16. They're never going to not be bar magnets. When you get down into the subatomic range, the white separates from the black, and, and that's the two particles. These are the two particles that make everything up. That normally they would consider a, pos a positive particle, and this normally would be considered a negative particle. And the two of them glue together. They call them actually call them gluons. All right, the two particles glue together. When these two made up with another two, they become photons. As they become larger, at 1823 or so, they become protons. 1824 becomes neutrons. So basically, it's, to visualize it, it would be like this. That's a proton, that's a neutron. When they smash them together, they get all kinds of bits and pieces. Well, they actually consist of this particle right here, which is the proton or the neutron, doesn't matter. They have 1823 for the proton, 1824 for the neutron. Deep inside the center, is where the dark matter is because it congeals into the center, as I showed before. Now there's going to be some changes to science and chemistry, space, a lot of things change. The redshift is not realistic. Light slows down, it doesn't shift because it's being pulled away. 
space, time, distances. We got some work to do in those areas. All right. And this is the new atomic model. All right, before we get started, let me explain. This theory goes back to a very long time ago, 50 years ago. I had that there's only two types of particles. There's dipole-dipole interactions. Some of them are polar molecules, some of them are nonpolar molecules. And this was my statement. The Rutherford's atom is wrong, which the Bohr model is based on. You can't base your, your model on a wrong premise. I say that the transfer of energy is from light to atomic vapor. Light is really the particles that make up everything, as I will show you shortly. This is what I say a proton is, which is a bunch of dark matter, literally dark matter, that is in the core surrounded by tons of, of electron particles, which are the glowy particles that we see. But the dark matter is deep inside, so it's never been seen before. The only time you ever see that is with the particle colliders, and then they really don't know what they're seeing because they just have a bunch of debris. We use light, so we got off a little easier. All right, I'm just going to briefly go through these things. This is the Dirac neutrino, which has got the white and the black particle, just exactly what I showed you over here. And these are Dirac neutrinos. Now, what we did was we took light, which is this here, from a red laser and now it's just starting to accelerate it's pushing through all the other fields that are in the air because every single particle every single gas every single bit of heat has a field around it so we have to push our field which is this big field through all of their fields the particle is down in here this particle is just a tiny little thing way down in here there's almost nothing there but the, the field surrounding it is what's got to get through the air. So it, it creates a, a havoc around it. So as that goes through the air forward, we accelerated it because of a venturi. A venturi is nothing more than like the house, nozzle on a hose. It comes in at a certain speed, it goes out much faster. And there it is right there. And it's, a venturi is what atomizes things. Well, we're atomizing atoms. We're turning it into subatomic particles. And they're subatomic here. Here, they're actually light, which is actually subatomic too. But you can see the, the wave produced by the particle. Now the particle is being pulled directly out of the wave, and it's accelerating. There's no real question about that. This is an, a, a subatomic nuclear explosion. The white particles are just exploding like a bomb, and the black can't get through. The black stays here, and, and black pulls back in over here. So there's got to be some black just laying around waiting to catch on to the, because I don't think this black jumped over ahead of it. Let's look at it real careful. All right, so again, this is the light just starting to accelerate. This is the light I'm really accelerating. This is when it hit the Venturi. Here's what it did. It took the muon neutrino, electron neutrino, which is the Dirac, and it split it. It kept the black off the here, and it let the white come through. There's no other way to say it. It's fission and fusion. And in between here, this is raw electron showers. Electron showers have absolutely incredible amounts of energy. And they know this. We should be able to get free energy out of that. Now, just to make this as clear as I can possibly make it, we took the light, we accelerated it. The particle divided. The particle on its way to the Venturi looks like this. Now what you're seeing here is neutrinos. These are all neutrinos. These are photons. Now the reason these have fully fledged photons are because they are stacking up on themselves because they can't get through that Venturi. They're being pushed back. So these think they actually literally hit a wall, so they start glowing like a regular photon would. During the air, as they move through the air, they just don't have enough energy to be real fully-fledged photons. But once they bounce off a wall, that's when you see. That's when you see the bounce back is, is what you're seeing here. But this already thinks it hit a wall because of the reverse of all of those particles. And this is when they reverse. 
All right, they come back this way. So now they, these particles here start glowing like crazy. Now the green and the, bl uh, the blue and the, the red, they're all the same. These the same particles. All right, so they're the black and white Dirac neutrinos. Back to back makes a photon. A single Dirac neutrino is literally an electron. That's what an electron is. We never knew that. We always thought the electron was that glowy part and that's all there was. No, it's attached to dark matter. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Dark matter is right in front of our face all day long. Now when they do a CERN and a Fermi lab and all the rest, they smash these big particles like this. They get all of this debris and they say, wow, these are all special particles. They're not. All they are is pieces of these. Some are big pieces like the X's, some are little pieces like this, like just the, the glowy parts, some of them are photons, but they're only, they're just all made of these dipoles. So there's not all of these particles, there's just two little particles. Okay, let's wrap it up with this. If anybody has any questions about this, I'm more than happy to answer them. Now that's the light it's starting to accelerate. This is full acceleration mode where the particle is being shown, coming through the Venturi, this is coming at us through the Venturi. These white particles reconnect with the black particles and forms Higgs fields. These are Higgs. Alright, so that's, that's the new atomic model electron, dipole electron flood theory.